This past week, we had some news on the Wheel of Time TV show front that took everybody by surprise. And I'm not going to spin it any other way. This is not good news for the show. This week, we'll break down the Matt Cawthon recasting. We'll talk about why it happened, who the new Matt is, and what all of this means for the show going forward. We'll also talk about some things going on in the Wheel of Time world that are good. So join me as we break down all of the news and notes from the past week on the weekly Wheel of Time news. <laughs> Now, before we get too deep into the Matt Cawthon recasting talk, let's get a few things out of the way. First, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. About half of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel, and you will certainly want to be as we get closer and closer to the launch of the show, of which is less than 60 days away right now. Second, quick thank you to the video sponsor, Audible.com. With the show coming out less than two months from now, it is a good time to either read the first book or reread the first book. It will be super cool to be able to compare with a fresh memory what is different and what is the same from the books to the TV show. One of my favorite ways to reread the series now is through audiobook. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer are literally legends in the Wheel of Time community for their audiobooks on the Wheel of Time. If you have never checked out the audiobooks before, now is a good time to start. And I've got good news for you. You can get the Eye of the World for free. Audible is the largest depository of audiobooks in the world and their subscription plans are one of the cheapest ways to get audiobooks. It's super cheap on a monthly basis and you get one book a month. So let's get to the free part. Because you're one of my viewers, Audible will give you a free audiobook just for signing up for the trial. You can keep it regardless of whether you decide to keep Audible or not. So it really is free and it's a win-win for everyone. The odds are if you like the audiobook, you're gonna keep Audible because it is worth it. So head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and sign up for the free trial, it'll be awesome. And now lastly, let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of green with no major spoilers of any kind. Even if you have not read the books, you should be good to watch this video, enjoy. So let's kick off the news with the big headline. This past week, Deadline released an article stating that Barney Harris would be leaving Wheel of Time after season one. Barney Harris was set to play Matt Cawthon for the entire series. So the article was confirmed by other sources and with Amazon, so this is not speculation. Now Deadline did not give any reasons why Barney would not be returning, and Amazon has made no public statements about what happened. Typically, I love to speculate on all of the things going on with the production and give you my best guesses, but in this case, it feels a little bit more appropriate to avoid any crazy speculation because we just don't know anything and something like this isn't normal. And so I wanna make sure there's no bad circumstances behind it before I just start willy-nilly throwing out guesses. Here's what I do feel like I can say with certainty. I do not believe this has anything to do with his performance. In fact, I think Barney will be a very, very good Matt for season one. And I can give a couple reasons why I think so. For one, typically if somebody is going to be replaced because of their performance, usually those decisions are made very early on in the filming if it's just not the right fit. They usually do not wait until the entire first season's over and then they're marketing and then decide to replace them. I also have some other reasons though to doubt this is performance based. I actually communicated with Barney right after he was cast. He had reached out to me and that was very much to my surprise. And he asked me what it was like to be Matt Cawthon and if I had any advice on making Matt authentic and real and how did the fans see Matt. He had a very strong desire to understand the character and to do the very best job that he could. This by itself doesn't mean that he would have succeeded at it, but then later Brandon Sanderson mentioned that he spoke with Barney while he was on the set and Barney said basically the same things. He said Barney was asking a ton of questions to fully understand Matt. And again, this does not mean that Barney succeeded with that, but it typically is a good sign. I think the most telling reason though came in an interview with showrunner Rafe Judkins that he gave to Den of Geek after the completion of the first season. He said that Barney gave a very strong performance when he was describing the first season. Now this could have just been a nicety, but in the context of it, it did not feel that way. So if it is not performance, what could it be? Like I said, I want to avoid getting into any unsubstantiated speculation. There are all kinds of reasons why somebody would move on from a show. It could be that an actor doesn't want the commitment of a multi-year series. It could be scheduling conflicts, monetary conflicts with the studio. It could be that they have other artistic interests. I think, at least for me, I wish Barney well. I will follow his other work as it comes. And I sincerely hope that he is all right 
and that this is just a personal decision and not some other reason that's keeping him from moving forward with the show. So all of this brings up another question. Why would this information come out now? On the surface, it does not seem like a great time to announce that a character was recast. As we mentioned, we are less than two months away from the premiere of season one, and one of the things that we want for fans to feel is to feel enthralled and attached to the characters and the actors' performances. Knowing that the actor playing Matt will be replaced in the next season while we watch it for the first time is probably going to hurt that attachment. In my mind, it would make the most sense to announce this after the first season was shown completely. So why would they be doing this now? Well, I think it can be a couple things. One, I we don't have the details about where Deadline got this information, so it may be that they got it from an anonymous source or they discovered it through another channel of their own. Either of those cases, Amazon would have had no control over that narrative, and so it, it would have been mattered when they released. It could also be that Amazon wanted this released now, and then they leaked it themselves without publicly confirming it. But why would they do that? Well, there's a couple reasons there too. First, the Comic-Con panel is coming up on October 8th, and I would imagine that quite a bit of the main cast is gonna be on that panel. If Barney Harris is conspicuously absent, that's gonna raise a lot of questions. It's possible Amazon just wanted to get ahead of that. Another reason could be that they did all the marketing math in their heads and decided that this would have the least impact right now. They are way smarter with marketing than I am, so they know what they're doing, and that could have been their decision making, and so then they leaked it. Either way, the change is happening, and I think the next question is, will this be a really bad thing for the show? And to a degree, I think that it's going to be a hard question to answer right now. I would say that it's probably pretty hard to spin this as a good thing for the show. At best, you can probably say this isn't ideal. At worst, this could be very, very damaging. But I think it's also important to realize that recasting is not that uncommon for a major TV show, even for main characters. Typically, once you get past the initial shock of seeing a different person with a different take on the character, you'll usually settle in and just enjoy the story. The highest profile recast I can think of was Rhodey from Iron Man. Terrence Howard was cast as Rhodey in the original Iron Man film. Due to a salary dispute, he was replaced with Don Cheadle for the rest of the Marvel movies and the TV shows all the way up to this date. And while Terrence Howard was actually a great roadie, he's a great actor, I think most fans think of Don Cheadle in the role now. There are tons of other notable examples of stuff like this, even in the MCU. Edward Norton was replaced by Mark Ruffalo to play the Hulk. All of those are examples of this. And for a more detailed breakdown of a ton of other examples, check out Adam Whitehead's article on Dragon Mount. He really gets into this, and I think he does a great job there. The verdict is, though, that something like this is not the end of the world for the franchise, and it's much better that it happens now rather than season three or four. That still doesn't make this a good thing, but it is also not the end of the Wheel of Time TV show either. If the actor replacing Barney is great, most fans are likely just going to accept it and move on. So who is the new actor then? Well, Irish actor Donal Finn has been selected to replace Barney Harris as Matt for season two and beyond. So who is Donal Finn? As I mentioned, he's an Irish actor that's experienced on the stage as a theater actor, and he has some roles in some television shows and a feature film. His most notable role that most people would have seen him in would be on The Witcher, where he plays a small role in the same episode that started that annoyingly great Toss a Coin to Your Witcher song. He is though a graduate of the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, also known as Lambda, which is very prestigious and that's a good sign for his abilities. We talked a bit about him on my live show earlier this week, so you can go back and check that out for a more detailed conversation. But based on some clips of his acting and interviews, it looks like he's going to do a great job in the role. During the live stream, I played a longer clip of an interview that he gave about an upcoming role, and it shows a little bit more of his playful side. I will play a short clip of that interview for you all to see, but I'm also going to play a short clip from a dramatic short film that he made while at Lambda that I think shows more of his acting range. Probably Pierce Brosnan, and he knows it. Um, no, that's not. Um, my, my doppelganger is uh, my best mate, Aina, from home. I call it as a rock star because I love um, my early morning starts. I, I kind of get out of bed at about 8 a.m. and I just think, any time that I've slept in after 10 a.m., I felt crap. Yeah, so I couldn't, I couldn't last as a rock star. He took us all in, you know. It's not a pot that tasted, but he made us feel like this place made us feel normal. Like we had something that was old. 
So as you can see, he has quite a dramatic range. I'm actually really confident in Donal's ability to get Matt right with the right direction in writing. I, I am actually very excited to see him, but then I'm also excited to see Barney as Matt, so we'll have to see how it all goes. In summary, while I am far from thrilled about the change and honestly wish that it had not happened, it does not change the fact that we are getting the Wheel of Time on screen, and I think they are still hiring quality people. I sincerely hope the writing is good, because the quality of the actors they keep getting seems to be pretty high. In other news, Eye of the World has jumped to number three on the Washington Post mass market paperback bestseller list. Say that four times fast. More than 31 years since it's been released, Eye of the World is back in the spotlight, and that is just a sign of what's to come with the TV show. Expect this to jump even higher as more and more people are checking out the books as they learn about the show. I literally had a friend today mention that they saw the trailer, didn't know that I made YouTube videos about Wheel of Time, and asked me if I wanted to read the books with them. It was actually really crazy, and so he had just bought Eye of the World. And I think we all need to kind of get used to this. It's super exciting, the community's growing, and that's what I'm all here for. Now in community news, my great friend Brian, who many of you know as Rakapa Sadai, on the YouTube channel Wheel Talk, did something that is pretty damn amazing. Rikappa is known for Lego breakdowns of scenes from the Eye of the World, re-showing them in Legos. So in honor of the Wheel of Time TV show trailer, Rikappa did a complete Lego recreation of the trailer, and it is amazeballs. Take two minutes of your life, Go watch that Lego trailer, and while you are there, subscribe to Wheel Talk. Wheel Talk is one of the most legitimately funny Wheel of Time channels out there. It is incredibly entertaining. You are missing out if you are not following Recappa regularly. And so last week, we had a contest for another map. This time, it was the Vagina, I mean, Tarvalin map. And we have our winner. The Gleeman's Apprentice Pod has won the map. Message me on Discord, and I will get you out your copy of the map here soon. For this week's contest, we're going to go simple. We'll do a $20 gift card to shopwheeloftime.com so you can buy your own stuff there. Here is how you enter. Like I said, simple this week. You have to be subscribed to the channel, you have to like the video, and then leave a comment in the description saying that you want to enter the contest. Easy enough? I thought so. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment saying you want to enter the contest, and you're good to go. So that's it for the news this week. What did you think of the Matt Cawthon recasting? What do you think it means for the show? Let me know in the comments of the video. Do not forget your free audiobook with Audible and a big, big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You make these contests and all the content possible. Thank you for your support. If you want to be a part of what I'm doing and you want to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon link in the description of the video. That is the best way to support the channel directly. Thank you all for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?